Hi and welcome back. It took uh, just about 30 minutes to download all that uh, software pretty fast. Okay, now you see we're at the screen where it wants us to create a USB boot stick. And at this point we're not going to do that. I've never needed one ever anyway. And besides, you can make one later if you like. So I'll hit OK to skip. Okay, now we're going to install the Lilo bootloader. And we like things simple, so we're going to use the uh, simple uh, mode here. Just hit OK. And now we're going to uh, choose what Linux console we want. And I always choose the standard Linux console, just because the other ones aren't that much better, different fonts or or whatever. And standard is supposed to be the safe choice, and we like safe as well. So let's hit OK there. OK, some systems might require extra parameters to be passed through the kernel. Um, usually there's nothing that needs to be filled in here, so hit OK. OK, and here beginning with the 2.6.24 kernel, the text consoles default to UTV-8. If you want anything different, you can uh, change this, but I don't know why you really would, so hit no. Okay, we want the bootloader to install to the master boot record. That's the best place uh, for it. So it's already highlighted for us, so hit OK. And you'll notice that Slackware does use Lilo. There is a more modern bootloader out called Grub. And if you really want to use that one, you can install it later on. Uh, Lilo is a good, solid bootloader that has never given me any problems. But you can install Grub later if you like. Okay, and for the mouse, the highlighted IMPS2 works just fine for any uh, USB mouse. Go ahead and hit OK. The GPM program is a program that lets you use the uh, mouse. It gives you a, a cursor on the uh, command line. I've never actually used it, but it might someday be a useful thing. I always go ahead and load it. Say yes here. Would you like to configure your network? Yes, we would. OK, now we need to make a host name for the computer. It doesn't matter what that is. This computer we're going to call Slacker. Put in your host name, hit OK. And now it asks for a domain name. Now this can be anything. Just make something up. It doesn't matter one little bit uh, what this domain name is. And so we're going to just say slacknet.com. Just for the fun of it. There's no reason I'm putting that in. You can put in anything you like uh, at this uh, at this stage here. So I put in slacknet.com, hit OK. OK, for our network, we want it easy, so we want DHCP. OK. Uh, some network providers require some additional information for DHCP. Uh, my, one, my particular one doesn't, and I've never had one that does. So you'll have to talk to them. But in most cases, you can just hit OK here. Okay, review the settings that you want. Everything's good. Hit yes. Now this screen gives us an option to start up certain programs uh, when, when you start up your Linux computer. Uh, the first one is ATOC for uh, if you're connected to an Apple system, which we are not. Okay, the second one is BIND. If you want to set it up as a domain name server, that's awesome. You can uh, have bind run. We're not doing that, so we don't need it. Okay, cups is the print server. That's useful, so we're going to asterisk cups. Okay, the next one uh, is set up a uh, DHCP server. We're not doing that, so we'll skip that for now. Okay, fuse is already asterisk for us because that's important. Okay, and here, uh, Slackware is awesome. It gives us the opportunity to uh, start up the Apache web server. If you want to use your computer as a web server, uh, we're not using this one as a web server, so we're going to skip that one. Okay, the BSD INETD daemon is already asterisk for us, because that's important. We're not going to be using packet forwarding, so we don't need that. Okay, message bus we want, and that's already asterisk for us. 
Okay, we can even uh, set up a MySQL database if we like. We're keeping it simple right now, so we're not going to set that up. Okay, uh, network time server, that's always a good thing. I like having that on any computer. Okay, uh, this isn't a laptop, so we don't need PCM CIA. Okay, I do like connecting my Linux to other Linux computers. So I always like to have the NFS uh, daemons running. Okay, Samba. Uh, if your network has a Windows computer or two, Samba lets you uh, connect with them and share files and printers with them. Let's go ahead and say yes for Samba. Okay, SASL, we don't need at the moment. Send mail, we don't need. Uh, SNMP daemon, we don't need. Syslog, we do need. It's already asterisk for us. And SSHD, the secure shell, that's always a good thing to have running just in case you need it. And it's already asterisk for us. Now, one thing I, one thing I want to mention is that these programs, for example, if we uh, started up a, you know, if we had MySQL startup or uh, Apache web server, uh, even Samba, even though they're starting up, uh, when we start up our uh, Linux box, we still would have to do the configuration for them. This is just asking us if we want it to start. And we can always stop these later on from starting automatically, or if we want them to start you know, something else, if we decide we want a web server, we can later on start up the Apache. So that's not a problem. So after we've chosen what we want, hit OK. Would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? I always hit no, because I don't care. But you can always look at them if you like. Okay, hardware uh, clock. I always set it to local time, which is already highlighted for us. And my local time here in Portland, Oregon is Pacific. So I hit that. I like that. Hit OK. And we should be almost done. All right. Like I say, Linux is all about choice. We have our choices of uh, window managers. Each one is a little bit different. Now the KDE is an awesome window manager. It uh, You can configure it to do all sorts of stuff similar to a Mac uh, system, all sorts of graphic uh, fancy eye candy kind of thing. However, we are c uh, installing this particular installation on an older computer. We want something that it's not quite so resource intensive, so we're not going to opt for KDE. Uh, we have a number of others. I do like Window Maker. It's a little old and a little different than the others, but I do like it. But the best one I've found out of all these others is the XFCE, the one that's called the Cholesterol Free Desktop Environment. It's modern, it has lots of features, and it doesn't require much in the way of resources. It runs nicely on lower amounts of memory, and we're going to choose that one. Hit OK. OK, there's currently no password set on the system. That is true. Uh, Linux is very concerned about security. It almost insists on passwords, and it's not a bad idea anyway. So we're going to set our root password. And Linux has two different kinds of users, basically. The root user, which can do anything, and a normal user, which is limited in what it can do. You never want to run your system strictly in root because that's a recipe for disaster. Easy to hit the wrong key and mess things up. You always want to run your system as a normal user. But first, before we get into that, we're going to set the root password. And this can be anything you like. I put in what I want. See what I put in, it's telling me it's a weak password, but I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to type it in again, and then I have to type it in again. Okay, and my root password is set. Okay, press to continue. Okay, and we're officially done. Okay, we can exit. Okay, go back to that screen. Let's go down to exit. Okay, and it takes us back to the... Let's move this down a little bit. It takes us back to the... Command prompt here. 
or it will after we remove the disc. Okay, there we go. Disc is removed and we're at the command prompt. Let's close that up. Okay, now what we want to do before we go any further, let's go ahead and add a normal user to this. Actually, let's reboot it first. Let's reboot, reboot first. So, Control Alt Delete. And then we'll add a, a, a normal user as soon as it boots back up, which, which will just take a minute. We're now rebooting into our new Slackware system. And there's the Lilo screen. We're going to hit enter to continue on. You can set it later to continue automatically. And now it's loading the kernel and all the stuff. Now Windows does the exact same thing here, it just Windows doesn't show us all the steps. It's nice to know what's going on in case there's a problem, and then we can look on the screen and see exactly where the uh, in the um, kernel failed to load. And that helps us to uh, fix whatever problem it is. Okay, right now it's waiting to pick up a uh, IP address, but since we're not actually connect connected to the internet at the moment, it's going to time out. And as you see, it's continuing on. And there we are, our Slacker login. Now since we only set up the root, and let's go ahead and curve, point down a little bit and focus on the oops, on the prompt there. All right. Okay, we have to log in as root since that's all we've set up so far. Put in our password. All right. Now we're going to add a normal user. Just type in add user, all one word, A-D-D-U-S-E-R. And it looks like I misspelled it there. Add user. Okay, login name, uh, whatever you like. I'll put my name there. Okay, and this we can use the default. Initial groups, default. Okay, continue on. Home directory. That's what we want. The shell, the bash shell, that's what we want. Date, we don't care. Hit continue again. And all this information we don't need to put in. Okay, we do need a password. So type in your password, which should be a different one. Mine it says weak again, but I don't care. Type it in again. Type it in again. All right. And now to get to our to get away from root and you know you're in root when you have the pound sign what we want to do is type su space name you put in i put in brian enter okay and now we're in our normal user and you can see you know we're normal because we have the dollar sign and now let's go into our uh, window manager to do that just type in start x and hit enter and wait for a few moments. And here it comes. It says, welcome to the first start of the panel. And let me reach over and grab the mouse here. Okay, we're gonna use, oops. Gonna use the default configuration. Okay, and there we are. A nice, pretty, brand new Slackware Linux installation.